I built my first propeller-driven rocket about 25 years ago. It flew for almost a full two seconds. For some people, failure can have the same effect as a challenge. Instead of quitting and getting on to something that makes more sense, they pour even more time and resources into the project. So, with lots of rethinking, design modifications and improvements, my subsequent versions of the propeller rocket were even worse. Lately, there have been some signs of hope. Here you can see that it actually flew straight up for quite a while. This one used to be my favorite airplane. Me and this airplane go way back. About two weeks to be exact. In that short span, it crashed 80 times and spent about 13 days up in a tree. So I chopped off most of the wings and turned it into this rocket experiment. It's one thing to make a rocket go up, but it's quite another to get it back down in one piece. This one has a parachute, the idea being that the rocket should come down attached to it. <laughs> Each time I glue the rocket back together, it gets heavier by about two or three hot melt glue sticks. At this point, it's getting almost too heavy for the propeller to lift it. If you were a bird, you'd have a bit of trouble flying too if you were carrying around 14,000 hot melt glue sticks. And speaking of birds, they all seem to stay a long way off whenever they see me out in the field. <laughs> On this version, I used a much stronger parachute cord so that there is no way that it will ever break. The parachute is supposed to open while the rocket is still up in the air. Notice that the parachute cord didn't break this time. On this flight, it's starting to look a bit more like a rocket. It stands on its lower fins pointing up, and takes off vertically by itself. It certainly looks as if it could go a long way up if it ever felt like it. This time there's no parachute for landing. Parachutes are highly overrated anyway. This one was supposed to land vertically on its lower fins. Safe landings are highly overrated anyway. <laughs> 